There's a Turkish proverb that says, when the ax came to the forest, some of the trees said, at least the handle is one of us. <laughs> now, if the built environment of underserved communities could talk, I believe that's what they say to me and my fellow education reformers. If all we did was focus on building high-performing schools and not the communities around them, education will not solve for poverty. Education is not the panacea. Education is one part to a larger, more comprehensive solution. And I know because for me it's personal. I was born and raised in Far Rockaway, a, a neighborhood in Queens, New York. And Far Rockaway has one of the highest concentrations of housing projects in the country. The middle school I attended was one of the most violent, underserved, underperforming schools in the state of New York. It had the bones of a juvenile detention center. Every classroom had one window facing the outside, no bigger than the space between my hands. And on the inside, the building, shaped like a square, had plexiglass windows that couldn't open and faced a concrete courtyard. Next door to this middle school was a police precinct, naturally. The building looked like a prison. It felt like a prison. And in many ways, they were training us up for a bigger prison one day. But I got lucky. I ended up attending one of the highest performing public high schools in the country. And even though it was in Queens, it still took me two hours to get there and two hours to get home on public transportation, bus to train, bus to train. And over the years, as I traveled to and from school, bus to train, bus to train, friends would go to jail, and some would be murdered. And so I knew early on that even though I attended this high-performing public school, that if I didn't get out of Far Rockaway soon enough, Far Rockaway would consume me too. So I graduated a year early from high school, not because I was smarter than my friends and my peers, but because I needed to get out of Far Rockaway alive, even though I attended this high-performing public school. So I flew south, went to college, and even when I was in graduate school, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. But I did want to understand my own story and how it applied to so many black and brown kids that look like me, attending high-performing public schools, but living in their own versions of Far Rockaway. So in 2007, I had the opportunity to work with a team. And we developed a school that didn't just address the academic needs of a community, but it addressed the social fabric as well. This community had seen better days. Businesses were leaving. Families were filing for bankruptcy and foreclosure. And this was all before the recession. And so we developed a school with business as a core element. We brought in a youth bank, so our scholars actually run their own bank save their own money, real cash, and by the time they're in eighth grade, they're developing their own business plans. We subscribe to that 10,000-hour rule that a scholar starting with us in sixth grade, by the time they finish with us in 12th grade, they would have spent 10,000 hours focusing on business and entrepreneurship. Yes, college is important. Yes, the workforce is important. But community is important, too. These are our scholars that will be giving back to this underserved community. And we're already seeing the fruits of our labor. Two of our scholars, a middle school scholar and a high school scholar, brother and sister, they're the youngest owners of a food truck business here in Memphis. They have all the licenses you need to run the business, except they're too young to drive, so they don't have a driver's license. Their mom drives them. <laughs> Minor details. <laughs> but it's not just about the social side of community. The built environment matters, too. For me, I still had to go home every day. There were obstacles in the way, temptation at every corner. What about our kids that we serve today? It's still the same. And so in 2010, we expanded on our idea. And instead of just building a school with your typical four walls, everything contained in it, we decided to create an auditorium that was external to the building, a performing arts center that the whole community could use. Instead of a gymnasium inside of the school building, we're building a wellness center so the whole community could use it. And we're building affordable housing so we don't have to wonder what happens to our kids when they leave every day. It will be right outside of their doorsteps. 
And we're doing this all in blighted property or once blighted property. 24 acres of blight that was so bad, all 394 apartment units were collectively appraised at $100. And adjacent to that property was another 18 acres that was landlocked by that property and in some ways contributed to that blight. But in its place, we're building a microcosm of a healthy community, not just a school. And directly across the street from that site is our high school. It sits next door to a medical clinic and a dental clinic that serves low-income families. Both schools that anchor these developments are among the top 5% of public schools in the state of Tennessee. But the community matters just as much as the school. Most would say, just focus on the school. Education itself could solve for poverty. Just because some of us are the exception, it doesn't make it the rule. And to me, only focusing on schools defies logic. The same logic that says you can put water inside of an icebox for seven hours and take it out for seven hours and it goes back to its original state. Yet we do that with our kids every single day. We put them inside of a schoolhouse from eight to three and then we take them out for twice as long and we don't expect them to go back to their original state. That defies logic. Far Rockaway made me who I am. It's given me perseverance, drive, dogged optimism, but most of all, it's opened my eyes to the fact that we have to focus on the schools and the community. When the ax came to the forest, some of the trees said, at least the handle is one of us. I pray that we don't become the handle because the moment we do, the moment we only focus on schools and not the community around it, it's the moment we chop down the hopes and the dreams of the scholars and families that so desperately need to be served. And as a community, I know we're better than that. Thank you. Thank you.